Here I want to cover the two places where you can actually write DAX formula. Now the two places are calculated columns and in measures. Now I'm going to go over each one at a time. We're going to start with calculated columns. Calculated columns are as you can imagine based on the name. It's a, an additional column which doesn't exist in your raw data source. We need to add it somehow. And to add it, we it, we we write some logic, or we put some logic in a uh, some DAX formula logic uh, into a column to to create uh, that additional column. Very similar to if you're working in Excel and you wanted to add a, uh, another column with a formula. It's, it's exactly the same thing, but instead of uh, you know, we are actually using DAX formula. This is one of the areas where you can write DAX, DAX formula. So in this table that we're looking at right now, we've got the uh, the fact table, the sales table, all of this sales that we're making in our retail stores. We've got the order ID product that is being sold, where it's being sold, etc, etc. Now one thing just to uh, get an example of what a, a calculated column is, is we might want to in this case add the price of the product. Now the price actually already does exist in the products table here. You'll see here that we've got original sale price and current price. But just to show you how to create a calculated column, I'm also going to add this to the sales sales table. Now, in a lot of these examples, and especially with calculated columns, uh, you don't actually need to create these columns. I know if you're coming from an Excel background, you might think you have to, um, but you don't actually have to. I'm only doing these to show you what a calculated column is, uh, but then later on, I'm going to show you how you can actually use measures to it, to run these calculations versus adding a physical column inside a data table. But let's add the price here, just just as, as, as our first example. So to create a calculated column, up in the uh, ribbon, the modeling ribbon, you've got a new column here. So you want to select that. And I'm going to write some pretty simple logic in here to get the price into this column. And I'm going to get, I'm going to call the sales price. And I'm going to use this function called related. And all that means is I've got to reference a column name. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to reference the current price column. Now, if I go enter, that's going to give me a sale price for every single item that we have sold. Now, I won't go into detail about what related actually does, but because of the data model that we've created, what it is doing is it's bringing in the price of each individual product. And then now, for instance, we could write a new column here and we could we could call this say total revenue and we could go quantity, sales quantity times the sales price, right? The sales price was that calculated column we just created. And now we have, now we have another column called total revenue. So those are just some examples of what you could do uh, of how you actually create a calculated column. You can create cal calculated columns in any table in your data model. It doesn't have to be just say the fact table, the sales table. It can be uh, inside of uh, your lookup tables as, as well. So let's do an example there. So we just jump to the dates table. Now this is the, a, de a detailed dates table which has uh, for every single day, we've got the associated year, month, month and year, day of the week, etc., etc. Now, think of these columns as the columns which are going to go into your axes. They're going to be filters, basically, of your um, DAX measures eventually. Now, as I look at this table, I see that there's a dimension here that, that does not exist currently that I might want to put into some of my visualizations. Now, the month name here is the full month, but what I want is I want a short month. I only want the first three letters of each uh, of each month here. Now, we could actually use either of these columns, honestly, but uh, in this case, I'm going to use this month name column just to showcase another way that we could create a calculated column. So I'm going to go new column here, and I'm going to call this column short month. And I'm going to use some logic which you might be familiar with from Excel. I'm just going to go left here. And I'm going to go find my month name. And then I'm going to only use the first three letters of that month name. And then if I just come across to the side here, you'll see short month. And then we only have the first three letters of each month. 
So that's another way. I, I like to call this adding additional dimensions to your analysis because essentially what we've done here is we've created another filter that we could use throughout any of our analysis that we do from here on out. And so if you think about, if we go back to the data model, we see the dates table here. Well, that column now actually exists in our dates table and it can filter anything that we do down inside this table here. So if we go run a calculation and count up the quantity, we can now filter it by, by the short month. Okay, so that's probably enough uh, in regards to how you create calculated columns. What I would just reiterate here is that you don't, uh, and it's not actually recommended that you create these columns in here, this, you, this sales price and total revenue. The reason being is that we can actually create all of these calculations in what's called in memory. So through measures that we create, we can create these uh, internal calculations or we can do these internal calculations without having to put them physically inside this table. So that's a really key thing just to remember as you, uh, as you learn uh, how to write DAX uh, on top of your data tables. Okay, now let's just jump into measures, okay? So, what I'm going to do with um, to explain measures is, well, first of all, think about a measure. Think about a measure as a virtual calculation, okay? So it doesn't actually sit inside your model. It sits on top of your model. So when you use a measure, it only goes and does a calculation at that time that you use it. If you think about an Excel, every time you run a calculation in a column, for example, or, or in any cell, it recalculates all the time. Well, a measure only calculates itself when it, is, when it needs to. So it's basically like a stored calculation procedure that only gets enabled if you actually use it in a visualization. So let's just create a simple measure to highlight that point. Now, I'm just going to select the sales table. I'm going to select any column in there. And then to create a new measure, in the modeling ribbon up the top, you've got this new measure, this calculator here. And so if you click that, then it asks you to, it opens up this formula bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go total quantity, I'm going to call it something, and I'm going to call it total quantity sold. And I'm going to go sum the quantity column in the sales table. So you see there that the IntelliSense is actually really good in this formula bar as well. And then I'm just going to go tab and then I'm going to close that off. And so now we have this really simple measure. I'm just going to push enter. And this measure is now virtually completing its calculation. It's all do it's calculating everything in memory. And so this is uh, calculating the, the total quantity of items or the total alt items that we have sold throughout time is 29,000. And so we can just change up a few things or just get the entire number here. And so we've got 29,138. <laughs> but the key to remember here with this measure, right, is that this measure is just stored inside our model but doesn't actually go and run any calculations unless we drag it into, say, our report page, and uh, then it will then go and run the calculation virtually. And so in this case, this measure is virtually going to the sales table, going to the quantity column in that table, and then doing a sum over that entire column. This is actually called an aggregation measure, and so um, we'll be going over um, that shortly. But this is more just, um, in, this, in this instance, just to highlight, well, this is how you actually create a really uh, simple measure. Now, just to show you that you, we, we can create a lot of the, that calculated column that we just created, I'm gonna create a new measure here, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna call this total, um, total sales, because I've already used total revenue. And via this function called sumx, which is an iterating function, which I'll explain again in, in another module shortly, um, this will go and do those calculations. So I've got to reference the sales table. And then I'm going to go quantity times related current price. So you so remember this related current price is something that we, we went and physically put this inside. Uh, the data table. Well, in this case, I'm virtually putting it inside the data table 
by incorporating it in this measure. And then uh, what, a, what a, an iterating function does, which is the sumx function, is it goes to the sales table and then for every single row in the sales table, it times, as the, it times the quantity by the uh, current price or the related current price. And so if I push enter now, this total sales will now give me a result. Um, and I'll just turn, turn this into a, we obviously will want to format it and you can do the formatting in the modeling tab. Uh, you've got your data type up the top. And so um, you'll see now that this is virtually running this calculation. So a couple of key points there. Obviously we went over calculated columns and measures. Those are the two places you can, you can write DAX formula. The key thing with calculated columns is that you are physically putting a column or a, a column of data into your model, right? And so if you do that sometimes on some of your larger tables, those can be very large columns. And it just it's just important to recognize that uh, those can take up um, a lot of memory uh, in your model. They can make your file size larger. They can sometimes impact performance depending on how big the table is. So what you can do to counteract that in a lot of cases is you can actually use measures really effectively to run a lot of these calculations virtually and uh, and still get the same results that you were, that you would get um, by, by writing these calculated columns. So we've covered a bit there. Uh, hopefully that uh, makes it a lot clearer in terms of uh, the difference, the, where, where the, the, the two locations are that you write DAX and some of those uh, additional considerations that you have to make uh, when, uh, when writing DAX Formula and, and understanding how to incorporate DAX into your analysis within Power BI.